The Khalil Mack trade was, quite frankly, one of the most talked about trades uh, I can remember. Uh, it was in 2019. Uh, it was before my YouTube channel had even started. I was blogging uh, for a little bit before I started my YouTube channel. I remember writing, writing blogs about it at the time. And looking back on it now, it's kind of crazy uh, how we view it now compared to how we view it. It's a wild trade to look back on. So I want to just, uh, you know, get into it. This could be a long video, so I'll try to move quickly on how many different trades there were, what ended up happening with these two teams. Yeah, let's just jump in. So this was the initial trade itself. The Raiders received a 2019 first, uh, a 2020 first, as well as a 2019 sixth and a 2020 third. Uh, the Bears received Khalil Mack, a 2020 second and a 2020 seventh. It's always weird when there's like, why a sixth for a seventh? How, how did how does that uh, that much of an impact uh, that you needed that? But okay, that's that's what happened. So that was the trade details itself. And this is what the Raiders got. They actually selected players with three out of these four picks. They got four picks. They selected players with three out of those four. Uh, Josh Jacobs, Damon Arnett, uh, and Brian Edwards. Now, not exactly the hole you expect with uh, two first and a third, right? Like, Jacobs Jacobs has probably been, like, worth a late first rounder. Honestly, I, I'm kind of the anti-first round running back guy. And even I would say, like, I remember defending that move at the time. And I think it's, I think it's for the most part, worked out. Like, he was a really good halfback who, pl who played at an elite level for a while for them. That, that, that was fine. Um, but Damon Arnett obviously ended up being a bust. Brian Edwards showed some flashes, but still hasn't exactly moved the needle. Well, what about the 2019 sixth? What happened there? Well, they traded it to the Jets for Blesson Austin, that was who was selected with that draft pick, along with they traded uh, Kelly Osimile, uh, the offensive lineman, for a 2019 fifth round pick, which was also traded. It was a part of the Jawan Taylor trade when the Jaguars traded up uh, to get Jawan Taylor. They also got pick 140 and uh, one, uh, excuse me, and two. Uh, 35, which they used to select, uh, you know, the players see on the screen, uh, Reichwell, uh, Armstead, and Jontavius Russell. So those were the players that they selected. Uh, the Raiders got pick 38 and pick 109, both of which they also traded. Pick 38, they uh, gave to the Colts, who selected Cody Ford. The Raiders got pick 40, who, you know, Trayvon Mullen, who was good for a bit and then kind of fell off. And pick 158, which they also traded. They traded pick 158 and 218, which were selected, you know, which were used to select Michael Jackson and Mike Weber. And they received Hunter Renfro, pick 149. Finally, they didn't trade. So that's the end of that tree branch. But there's still plenty more we have to discuss. Some of the other uh, picks that are still out there. Pick 109, which I mentioned they traded, was used to select uh, Kyrie Willis. They got Isaiah Johnson and pick 135, which was traded. 135 was John Kaminsky, who has been become well known with the uh, Detroit Lions, but uh, they got Foster Moreau and Quinton Bell. So Foster Moreau was a solid tight end for them. So you're getting you know some some solid pieces here. Meanwhile, for the Bears, keep in mind, they had multiple picks as well, and the Bears made my job a lot easier by not trading away any of the picks that they uh, used. They, you know, got Cole, Cole uh, excuse me, they got Khalil Mack, of course, and then selected Cole Komet and Arlington Hambright. Arlington Hambright, uh, just a depth offensive lineman, but one of the best names in the business. Well done by Hambright. Uh, Cole Komet uh, has been a really good player for the Bears and definitely a, a nice addition to that trade. I do think it's worth mentioning, though, that the Bears did not end there. The Bears, yes, this is what they had, but it's worth mentioning, they also would go on to make a Khalil Mack trade of their own. So let's kind of follow that tree uh, branch down where it goes. They traded Khalil Mack to the Chargers for a second and a sixth round pick. It was largely a, a way to save money, but also get some draft capital as well. They added Jaquan Brisker, and this time they did trade one of the picks that they received, the, their 2023 sixth round pick. They traded for multiple seven round picks. And this was the trade itself. Scott Matlock was the player they ended up giving up. They got Elijah Hicks and uh, Trenton Gill. So, you know, uh, again, not exactly these blockbuster trades down the list, but they're still worth talking about. So uh, that's what the, the Bears received there. So, okay, final uh, verdict here. Let's talk about what happened. So the Raiders received Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, Brian Edwards. I'm not going to go down the whole list. We, we see who they received. I tried to put, some, you know, the most notable ones towards the top. So, like, you know, uh, some solid pieces here for sure. Like Jacobs was a good piece. Renfro, 
again, kind of hasn't been quite as good these past couple years. Uh, and you wonder how much that is scheme and stuff like that, but has shown flashes. Like I said, Brian Edwards showed some flashes. Foster Moreau showed some flashes, but you're not exactly looking at an elite bunch of guys either. You're certainly not. Meanwhile, you look at what they gave up. There's Cleo Mack, Jawan Taylor, Cody Ford. And then again, a lot of kind of players you're not like super missing out on. The Cleo Mack part of this trade was definitely the tough part of the trade. And I actually think, in fact, if you get rid of the, uh, you know, if you just look at the kind of the extending trades that they made throughout, they, they actually ended up doing all right there. So they kind of made up some ground with some of these trades, uh, you know, in later rounds after missing on the, you know, the, the obviously the Damon Arnett uh, miss is going to hurt them a lot. Meanwhile, for the Chicago Bears, what they get is four years of prime Cleo Mack, along with Jaquan Brisker, Elijah Hicks, Trenton Gill, Cole Komet, and uh, Arlington Hambright. So some good value. I think definitely you look at what the Raiders got and what the Bears got. The, the Bears won the trade. Like, that's just, it is what it is. And I think, you know, had the Raiders maybe hit on some of these uh, picks, we would look at it differently. But they didn't. So the Bears, I think, pretty clearly won the trade. Although the Bears, again, they gave up different than, it wasn't exactly a one for one, right? Because the Raiders made trade of, trades of other teams. The Bears made trades of other teams. So this is what the Bears got versus what they gave up, which was Josh Jacobs, Blessing Austin, Damon Arnett, uh, Brian Edwards, and Scott Matlock, which if you look at that, I mean, this is a massive victory for the Chicago Bears. Now, you could sit here and say, well, the Bears didn't really do, it's kind of one of those weird things where it's like, I think you could make an argument that both teams actually got fair value for this. Both teams could have come away huge winners in this situation. They just didn't quite get do what they needed to do. The Chicago Bears, you know, this trade along with just kind of uh, other pieces like the defense kind of filling out was able uh, to allow them to be a playoff team and a real contender. You know, if Cody Parkey doesn't miss that field goal, I'll be honest, I still think they had a ways to go to make a deep playoff run, but I, I don't think it was impossible either for them to make a deep playoff run. However, uh, you know, after that, they weren't, you know, they made the playoffs once more, uh, but that was kind of as a, you know, uh, almost like a pity playoff uh, team as the seven seed did not play very well against the New Orleans Saints, um, you know, who they would have played had Cody Parkey made that field goal. Uh, so kind of feels like they didn't really fully maximize getting Khalil Mack and the Raiders didn't fully maximize getting their draft picks. That's the other aspect is we talk about how much the Raiders missed their, you know, on the draft picks. Although, I do want to push back on that a little bit, and maybe this is an interesting kind of point to end on. So we talk about the Raiders missing on their draft picks. Well, I wanted to use the uh, consensus big board and say, what if, if they just drafted the consensus best player each time, what would have happened? Instead of Josh Jacobs and Damon Arnett, which definitely feels like you could get more value there, they would have ended up with uh, Jawan Taylor and Calevon Chason. Chason, uh, Chason ended up kind of being a bust for Jacksonville. Weirdly, both teams, both players went to Jacksonville. Uh, Chason ended up being kind of a complete bust. Taylor, I wouldn't say was a complete bust, but was kind of just a, you know, an okay pass blocking tackle who couldn't really run block, uh, which for the Raiders was not what they needed whatsoever. So uh, definitely... You know, you don't look at that and say, I, man, if we, if only we had uh, Jawan Taylor and Caleb on Jason. Now, again, you know, uh, Justin Jefferson was drafted not too long after Damon Arnett, right? So you could, you could do, do that, but you can do that with a lot of picks. So drafting is hard. And maybe that's part of the argument is, and why it's probably a good idea in most cases to, if you're the one, you know, trading for a good player. A lot of times you might be more willing, you know, more likely to win the trade because, well, yes, if the other team completely nails the picks, you could be in trouble. That doesn't usually happen. So that's kind of just, you know, maybe an interesting point to end on. I don't know. But but again, there have been times when trading away a good player was the right move. So uh, here, an interesting trade that was talked about a lot and didn't really end up uh, amounting to much. Didn't really change the NFL the way we thought, despite how hyped up it was at the time. But yeah, those are my thoughts on all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.